And we're back with The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Time for us to go through the papers this morning. We'll call it Off the Press. Chris Kane Wandu uh, joins the conversation this morning via Zoom. Chris, it's good to have you join us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Good morning. All right, then let's take a look at the punch. We start off with the punch. New Naira notes or New Naira governors, parties begin legal battle over CBN deadline. Erufai Matawale, Yahaya Bello, Sue, federal government demand extension. Court backs parties, stop CBN, Buhari from shifting date line. EFCC NAPS Abuja bank manager holding 29 million Naira new notes. These are the riders you find this morning. Court stops Lagos International Airport concession. Or Tom Sean's article campaign, are you slams governor or government will hunt down 16 nigerian killers in burkina faso buhari is quoted to say i mean really when people begin to ask how about those who have killed nigerians in nigeria we thought charity begins at home there's also a picture uh, that's been captured of uh, what's going on partially of what's going on in turkey following the uh, earthquake uh, you have underneath that picture, well, months as earthquake kills over 2,700 in Syria and Turkey. Uh, talks disrupt reverse APC rally and destroys vehicle. 613 billion suko bond or band spends on roads and bridges. That's what the federal government is quoted to say. And uh, Lawan's Supreme Court's victory, daylight robbery. Uh, that's the, what the camp of Bashir is quoted to say. That's the much we can take this morning. Well, let's quickly go over to The Nation now. We have some interesting headlines on the front page of The Nation. Uh, CBN, e, the CBN's Naira Swap issue takes uh, the, the, the lead story in the greater space. Uh, on that front page, governors ask Supreme Court to halt CBN's Naira Swap deadline. Governors ask S Supreme Court to halt CBN's Naira swap deadline. Kaduna Kogi Zamfara states, sue federal government for political parties get high court injunction to block extension EFCC arrest bank officials uh, official with 29 million Naira and new notes are some of the kickers or the riders rather to that story. 3,500 killed in Syria, Turkey earthquakes, uh, Buhari world leaders mourn. I think uh, this uh, takes it to, at the last I checked, about two hours ago, it was 4,300. Really sad. Trial of Ekwere Manu, wife, a child, a doctor begins. While NLC, or why NLC, opted for consensus to pick leader. And we have Emir Philly's Naira Redesign Dance and General Election is an opinion piece analysis by Lawal Ogie Nagbon, who's a managing editor of... Uh, the nation newspaper. Katsina, Buhari seeks two million votes for Tinubu. A terrorist will be defeated, says APC candidate. In the final two stories, Manchina loses Yobe APC senatorial ticket to Lawan. And uh, 391,145 PVCs uncollected in Oshun. Uh, worrying statistic there, if you ask me. So the headlines on the front page of the nation. Well, we take our attention to The Guardian. Court restrains Buhari CBN on February 10th deadline. Three APC governors sue federal government over Naira scarcity or Basaki backs cashless policy. Protesters accuse banks of hoarding and selling Naira notes to politicians for vote buying. Uh, 14 political parties threaten to boycott elections if Naira redesigned cash withdrawal policies are cancelled. Nasima CBN's should have introduced 5,000 notes, not redesign. Wow. I mean, we could just hear a lot of things going on. Mbaka spits fire over Kanu, now redesign and feels scarcity. And just before we move away, you have a Katsina attack. Debt toll may exceed 100 as government urges residents to, to confront terrorists. NIPC moves to improve FDIs, reduce Nigeria's uh, appetite for loans that's not going to happen that's how so much we can take on the guardian and a very final one is daily trust with these headlines uh, naira fuel crisis could hamper nigerian elections world bank i think this dovetails into some calls for the election to be extended and then some people pointing at what the 
uh, the head of INEC is saying, had said last week with the uh, logistic challenges that may be faced by the, uh, uh, the electoral umpire. Well, the riders to that, Kaduna, Zamfara, Kogi, CU Federal Government, CBNS Court, stops extension. Uh, 14 political parties threaten to boycott poll. And Buhari must act to douse tension. That's some of the headlines there. Pictures of the unfortunate uh, earthquake uh, and the crisis going on in Turkey and Syria. Uh, thousands of lives lost. Uh, and uh, uh, caption under that, death toll in Turkey, Syria, earthquake hits 3,000. Like I said, um, last I saw. Uh, about two hours ago was that it gone to about 4,000 uh, uh, plus. NAF aircraft loses tire, makes emergency landing in Lagos. Uh, EFCC arrests Abuja Bank manager for hoarding 29 million naira. New notes and Buhari wants killers of 16 Nigerians in uh, Burkina Faso punished. punished. Yobe North, Supreme Court affirms Lawan as APC candidate. IDP stranded as fire raises 200 houses in Borno camp, three soldiers wounded, six villagers killed in Benue attack. Chris Kenwan is our guest, he's the executive director of African Governance and Leadership Initiative. He joins us via Zoom from Lagos or in Lagos. Chris, good morning to you. Let's start off with um, uh, the Yobe North uh, senatorial seat. I think the, the Daily Trust River captured, or captured that on its front page. What are your thoughts on the Supreme Court ruling? The one concerning Lawan? Yes, exactly. Well, um, it is what it is. Uh, the Supreme Court is the final post for all judicial uh, litigations in Nigeria. So, as they always say, once the, the Supreme Court um, gives a judgment, then the only thing that is there for it uh, is to appeal to God. So, uh, in this instance, the Supreme Court has spoken, and that is what it is. They have their reasons for uh, giving this such judgment. A lot of uh, there have been a lot of discussion concerning the what the electoral act stated and what the Supreme Court said. But for me personally, I just so with some of the judgment coming out from the Supreme Court uh, now, I'm just looking at the Supreme Court as the biggest, um, the weakest link um, in our democracy. I'm not saying judiciary now, I'm especially saying the Supreme Court because there are some of the judgment that it has um, handed out of the sense that a lot of Nigeria just have possibilities. Because if um, by the provision of the electoral as uh, uh, instance is very said that a candidate cannot pick up two different forms at the same time. It cannot be contested for the president, pick a form for the president, and still want to also be uh, contested for governorship. And uh, this is what has happened. And uh, if there is not this called precedent in the law, once the judgment has been given, uh, then what are the suit that follows along that line to throw that line? Uh, so, and that is what happened. It started with that of, I think it was Umahi, either Umahi or Akbabi, I can't remember which one that came first, uh, that had that judgment uh, from the Supreme Court. So, any other subsequent um, case that is uh, solely related to such, it go the same way. And that is what has happened in that of Umahi, Akbabi, and now. Uh, uh, the president of the uh, of the Senate, uh, Ahmad Lawa, and um, that is what it is. There's not anybody can do. The, the thing has can only go and uh, get their books by uh, Senate President. Uh, it's not in the joyous prophecy. Funny enough, I remember vividly, vividly after the uh, judgment of the Court of Appeal, which was in, in favor of his opponent, he came out saying that. Uh, he's no longer moving for that, uh, for that or it's not going to uh, challenge that judgment of the Supreme Court. And uh, he has handed over everything to God. But probably when he saw the, I don't know, probably when he saw the judgment in favor of Maya and um, that of Akwabio, he felt that, um, that he has some chances and that is what he took. And um, that is what it is today. Hmm. What about the fact that this this um, has been? Uh, uh, I mean, you're talking about Supreme Court and then the details of uh, you know uh, uh, Lawan's emergence. You've also talked about um, uh, what's his name again, uh, David Umahi, and all these uh, candidates. I think and Adak Pabu to that list, and all these candidates that um, uh, purchased presidential forms from their parties and contested the party primaries, and then popped up in senatorial elections in their states. But quickly, a follow-up before we move away from this headline. The, the Supreme Court was clear that there was, or there were technicalities on which grounds they ruled in favor 
of uh, 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 Lawan, the Senate president. And it says that um, the, the, the appellate courts, the lower courts, um, were wrong to have given their own decisions uh, you know, in favor of Machina. Even though there was a split judgment between the five-member panel at the Supreme Court led by, led by the Lord Honorable Justice uh, Santos and Wednesday. But what the majority decision held is that um, uh, uh, Machina ought to have commenced his suit by a writ of summons going by the allegations of fraud against APC in transmitting Lawan's name to INEC, that he didn't start his suit by a writ of summons, and that's a technicality. So can we give it to the Supreme Court that, okay, they have gotten the decision right because of this technicality, which is law? I cannot, uh, in law, you don't just jump and take judgments. Uh, you must read the whole judgment uh, by a lawyer to be able to uh, get informed decision. So I cannot just take a paragraph from what you've read and uh, now um, start uh, alluding some kind of decisions uh, uh, to what the judgment. That is not what we are taught in law. So until I read the whole judgment of the court, as it were, then I can take a informed decision and make statements on that. But as I've said earlier on, it is the decision of the Supreme Court. And as far as the issue is concerned, the Supreme Court is the appellate court in Nigeria. And once it's taken a decision on that matter, that is where it ends. Whether it started from, one, whether it started from, the, uh, from the High Court, Court of Appeal, the judgment of the Supreme Court is the Supreme. So, and uh, the broad norm is the Constitution, as we say in law. And uh, once that, uh, there's not any that person can talk about. So if it's based on technicalities, technicalities then the lawyers of the uh, of his opponent uh, will be held responsible for that. All right, um, Best, right? Yeah, so as I said, uh, the judgment is what it is, and they will have to just... All right, um, let's take a look at the Punch newspaper this morning. The new Naira and uh, the saga, scarcity of the new Naira. Governors and parties have actually started legal battle over the CBN deadline. And what are your thoughts, especially when you have... Uh, three APC governors suing the federal government. And you know the ruling party is the APC. And also, I'd like you to comment on the fact that 14 political parties are, I mean, they have intentions of boycotting the elections if there's any possibility of cancellation or extending uh, the period of, for the uh, Naira exchange. As I've always said, the new Naira policy is uh, a very good policy initiated by the central bank government that they badly implemented. And that is where the problem is. It's the implementation that is causing the problem. Because even the CBA, the CBA Act uh, gives overwhelming power to the central bank of Nigeria and CBA to, to effectively implement uh, policies uh, that it thinks is um, in the best interest of the economy. And the Nigerians are that is so CBN is within its mandate to what it's doing. But the implementation of these policies is what is giving so much problem uh, there. And um uh, Mr. Kofi, I'm so sure you must have seen a, a video making the rounds on social media just the last night and yesterday and this morning of some bank officials jumping the fence just for them to escape from the crowd. I was a that video is all over social media. You can go and check it out. They were using, I saw ladies, even in skirts, climbing ladder of high walls just to jump over the fence uh, of their office from the park to escape. That is the level at which we continue to. And my problem is not the return uh, of, of the retrieving of the old Naira note. Anybody that has not, read, that has not deposited his own old Naira note in the bank now, well, he's on his own. I personally, I don't think I have more than 500 or 200 Naira, Naira notes. But the problem is that if I still have the new. That is the issue. The problem is central bank not making enough new Naira notes available for Nigerians to be able to assess. From what we had, the central bank is retrieving about two trillion Naira from the economy, old notes. And we are hearing that they've not printed more than five, uh, 500 billion um, um, new, uh, new currency. And that in itself is putting so much pressure. Even out of that 500 uh, billion uh, allegedly printed by them, how many at the bank? So you see the hanky panky um, under court businesses being done by the banks. We've seen instances where you would, just yesterday a bank manager, operational manager, was arrested by EFCC for holding 29 million naira new cash 
you know, that note in the, in the bank. We saw, it, we saw what happened in our, our state. We saw what also happened in some part of uh, We also have seen instances where the banks themselves are sabotaging the effort of central bank. So with this new, um, with, this, uh, with this restraining order from the um, high court uh, in Abuja yesterday, that, um, uh, um, that um, decision or um, there were, uh, um, it was um, four political parties, I think about four political parties that went to court and they got that restraining order. So it's not just an individual, it was about four political parties. Uh, also, about 15 political parties have come together to say that if the central bank extends the, um, the deadline of February 10, then they will go the election. So uh, now in a serious uh, uh, problem, I think that is something that central bank can, uh, can solve out. I personally, personally ask me, uh, Mercy Kofi, I will say that we should not extend that. Let us retrieve, let us stop the insurance of this old Naran. Maybe this one, that will make the banks to release the money and make the central bank also print more. They come up with a policy that, that individuals can, um, uh, can pick up 500,000 and then um, for, uh, for uh, private account or individual account and 5 million Naira. How come now they came up to say that, in fact, they stop at the point of um, Banks from issuing out uh, new Naira notes across counter. Then the now last week they came up with another policy of 20 million Naira. That can show that shows the uh, the sum of sort in terms of policies you know, that this, this central bank doesn't seem to get it right. And I've said it the day that uh, Godwin and Mayfield decided to become a politician and uh, rather than a banker. That was the day he lost it. But as it stands today, except as any other order from any court in the land, we probably might come from this then sort of appeal, then this um, restraining order by the court have to stand. That means that by the 10th of um, February, 12 midnight, then the issuance would be a thing of the past. So, All right. If, yeah, see, if um, I mean, looking at that scenario now, so we're going to have, I mean, the CBN had also said that it would be okay to uh, take this old note and get to the bank to deposit this money. But what now happens? Because I think that the current society that we have is a combination of the new note and the old note. So what happens if um, the old note is no longer a legal tender and then we don't have enough of the new note? We're not even uh, cash policy ready because you go to some of these business places uh, that don't have the POS. And even when you want to um, carry out transfers on your phone, it, it could take you forever because of you know connectivity issues and that could probably be from the bank so where exactly are we headed with all of this confusion let us not get it mr the central bank this issue say that at the expiration the expiration of the deadline i should take your good narrow notes to the uh, banks that is wrong that's not the, the, that is not the directive of central bank you will take that money to the central bank not to any commercial bank that is the directive of the uh, central bank press release statement issued and I don't think there's been anything to the contract, uh, irrespective of whatever the central bank government said that the House of Representatives uh, meeting uh, a dog of the sea. Now, the, we are running into serious problems. If by the end of the week, Nigerians cannot access their money, then there's going to be serious issues. If the central bank is not pushing out the economic currency, that could be a problem. We've already seen people stripping themselves in, their, in the banks. We've seen the women, these men stripping themselves. We have seen the shoveling and in fact it has gotten to a point where a, a, a nigerian died in the bank where he was trying to make transaction or trying to cure for money and the rest of them that would be more chaos and if this is not made in the court coupled with the fact that we're having serious um, petroleum um, issues uh, scarcity this may snowball into what may not be able to handle there will be protests in some states like edo or your state and the rest of them i hope this will not spread by next and that in itself is going to bring to question and may affect the, um, the 2023 election as it were. As I said earlier on, this is a policy where thought that that badly implemented and that is what has happened. And don't forget, just as of this morning, the uh, transport workers are already threatening that they're going to withdraw their services to INEC. INEC is banking on using about 100,000 vehicles for the election. Now, that where you ask yourself, where are they going to get the fuel to do that? Is there going to be a designated police stations where these vehicles are going to 
get well. People cannot travel now because it, one, you don't have the Naira, two, you don't even have the money to be able to do. So I wanted to be able, um, pick up uh, money from the POS and yesterday. I asked the guy to give me 10,000 Naira. He said he doesn't have 10,000, he can only give me 5,000. I said, how much is it? He said he was going to charge me 700 Naira for 500 Naira. That is over 10% um, on that amount. And I can tell you, Kofi, it is much, much easier for you to get a, a, a dollars, to buy dollars now. That is the point with which we have. Now, even in Naira, we are having we are having the parallel market and the official market now for Naira. Not even uh, because what you are asked now is how much are you buying? You, how much are you buying? You? So that means that becomes disparity, just like what had with the dollars and foreign uh, foreign currencies. And this is not good enough. If nothing is done, so the president said we should give him seven days. I don't know when the seven days is going to lapse. I'm sure he has just a few a few days to go. And the court has a, the worst angle we are coming is that if now that judiciary is being called into this. And you know what happens when the judiciary comes into uh, issues like this. We are going to we are going to sit on the very, very locked in. I hope this will be resolved or not before the, the desperation of 10th February so that Nigerians can be able to assess this one as it well. All right, Chris, uh, let's look at the, um, the next uh, story of interest. Uh, this will still, I'll still go back to the Daily Trust. And um, uh, this is about the fuel crisis. Last night I asked a set of people on another program if, um, if they would want to see it to be okay with uh, the idea of extending the elections. And every single person, bar maybe one or two, said never. <laughs> so the World Bank has uh, put its, its uh, mouth in this uh, debate, saying that... Um, the elections could be hampered by the Naira and fuel crisis. Um, this is a World Bank we're talking about here. What are your thoughts on this? Well, it's obvious without the World Bank telling us, what it is, I already said it earlier on that it's going to have a serious impact on the election. Whether we like it or not, whether it's able to solve it between now and the fifth of February, which is when we're going to have a presidential and senatorial uh, election or not. But it's going to be it's going to impact on it. And seriously, if we don't do it, what I'm going to do, what we're going to see of it is I'm going to be more like voters apathy. You may you see that a lot of people might not be able to turn up to vote because they are disenchanted with the system and because uh, they are going to they will feel bad. Why should they go uh, uh, you know the mentality of operating Nigeria? Why should I go and vote for people that have continued to keep us in uh, in this kind of situation. So why would I go and waste my time um, to go and start queuing when I don't even have fuel in my, uh, I don't have fuel in my vehicle or generator, when I don't have Naira, when I cannot feed, because it's getting to that point now. Nigerians are finding it very, very difficult to feed. Um, Messi mentioned something about electronic uh, transport address. For the past 48 hours, I've tried to make some electronic transport my, from my account. I cannot. I find it difficult. I cannot do that. When you get to the portal, you enter the you cannot. It's not even opening. A particular bank is not even opening. So what does that mean? That means I have to go back to the bank physically to go and um, and it, 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 it won't blame you because the system, the way it was programmed, and the sturdiness of uh, uh, yes of uh, the CBN directly have not given the banks enough room to expand their technology. If initially they were, uh, they were servicing, let's say, 10 people using that technology online, then with the new CBN policy, of it, that means they, they must have added about 90 more people to that. And that in itself is going to uh, strain um, the network. Do they, do they have enough bandwidth to be able to handle that? Do they have enough uh, back end uh, in house to be able to handle that? A expansion of such technology does, is not something that is done within two days or one week they must invest more in bringing on more facility. And that is what is happening. So you are talking of a cashless society, which is, you are not even expanding the necessary infrastructure to be able to capture that. That is what the Nigerians are. Nigerians are. And you put talking of um, is a, the average woman that sell lacquer on the road, the one that sell like Balumon, the one that sell a vegetable. It's going to be, you go to the market now, you want to buy vegetable, you tell the woman, give me a account to do transfer. we we'll go to the, most of them are even ready, not ready to sell. So, there is a total lull in the economy, and that is where we're saying. So the one back report is just um, it's just an addition to what we've already known. And a lot of Nigerians have been saying, if this issue is not resolved within the next, the election is uh, barely about um, 
Today is 7th. Uh, we have uh, barely about uh, 18 days to the general election. And we are still global. This is the first time we are, we are facing this kind of reality. The first 2015 election was because of this security was postponed. That of um, 2019 was postponed by one day because of logistics. But what are we going to say? We, we uh, we to go. Definitely, this will not be, it must not be postponed for whatever reason. We must go into this election and get it done, done with as quickly as possible. All right, then, uh, Chris Kennedy Wandu, thank you so much. We have to let it at this point. Uh, we appreciate your thoughts. And as we proceed in 2023, we look forward to having you uh, on the show. That is good, though. <laughs> have a nice day. Chris, you, ha you have narrow notes with you. I mean, I don't know. We're looking for, I don't know, Mercy has. Well, to, to, well, today, I've well, known if I had had I would have gone to take one or two from me. I don't even have where to move around. So right, the right. Naira I'm talking in the house. Right I'm now, it's, e it's easier to get fuel than to get the Naira. It's e easier to get a dollar than to get the Naira. Right. So I don't it's know. easier for to get the dollar. If I, if that is what most. You know what people are doing now. What we are doing now is that they are making transfers to some because the Aboki don't need a cash from you. All you just need is just give him your account, just um, you know, collect your account number to transfer the money you want, and they just give you uh, dollar cash. That is what. Uh, but are you going to spend dollar at the market to buy vegetable and dress? That is where the problem is. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Th that's yes. a very valid God question. Has helped, uh, Chris, thank you for your time. <laughs> thank All you right. very much. Have a nice. Chris, Chris Kenewado is the executive director, of African uh, Governance and Leadership Initiative. Well, that's the size of it. We take a break, and when we return, we'll be looking at our first uh, conversation right here. 14 political parties are threatening or have threatened to withdraw from uh, the race if there's an extension. I mean, so you have those who are for and those who are against this policy extension and whatever you. That would be the crux of the conversation when we return. Please stay with us. Good morning.